Cash flow is the lifeblood of an organization. And in this video, we're going to start the process of understanding the cash budget. We've already completed the following budgets in the master budgeting process for Gratman Manufacturing. Sales budget, production budget, direct material budget, direct labor budget, manufacturing overhead budget, ending finished goods inventory budget, cost of goods sold budget, selling and admin expenses budget, and the budgeted income statement. Now we're going to start the process of developing the cash budget, our last budget in the master budgeting process. Why is a cash budget so important? As I mentioned before, cash is the lifeblood of an organization, critical to their long-term success. Although profitability through the income statement is important, if a company can't collect their sales in cash and pay their debts as they come due, they won't survive for long. If management understands when cash is expected to be received and when it is required to be paid out, they can plan to borrow when cash is low and repay debt when there is excess cash. This is the reason why a cash budget, which allows management to predict cash inflows and outflows, is one of the most important budgets in the master budgeting process. How is a cash budget structured? As always, we start with the company name, the name of the budget, cash budget, and the period covered. Cash budgets might be monthly, quarterly, or even annually. We then move on with the body of the budget, starting with expected beginning balance, which is the opening cash balance. We then add in all the cash receipts, cash that the organization expects to receive during the period from outside sources. The expected beginning balance plus the cash receipts is equal to the cash available during the period. We then deduct the cash payments, the cash outflows the organization expects to make during the period. Cash available less cash payments is equal to the expected ending balance, the balance at the end of the period. Note that this is the most basic structure for a cash budget. Cash budgets can become much more complex, but we're going to start with the basic cash budget. Let's start by looking more closely at some of the line items. The expected beginning balance is the opening cash at the beginning of the period. This might be based on the budget from the past, but it could also be the actual cash balance at the start of the period covered. This is generally given in the question or obtained from the prior period's balance sheet. Makes sense since the closing cash balance on the prior period's balance sheet would be the opening cash balance for the following period. How do we determine cash receipts? Remember that cash receipts are the cash the organization expects to receive during the period from outside sources. Cash receipts are made up of three different inflows of cash. First, the cash sales made to customers. If an organization has cash sales where cash is received immediately, that's a cash sale. An example would be when a wholesaler sells a product and the customer pays cash. Second is cash collections. This is when an organization sells on account and records an accounts receivable. Cash collections are when the customers pay their outstanding accounts receivable balances. For instance, if a wholesaler sells $12,000 of product to a customer on account and the customer does not pay for 60 days, when the customer does pay, it's considered a cash collection. Finally, we have cash inflows from the sale of assets. For example, if an organization sells old machinery for $6,000 cash or sells their investment in the shares of another corporation for $120,000 cash, both of these cash inflows are from the sale of assets other than inventory sales. The most difficult part of determining cash receipts for the cash budget is the cash collections, cash received from customers paying their accounts receivable balances. That's because customers don't pay all at the same time. Cash receipts are therefore going to be spread over any number of months. The majority of cash receipts comes from cash sales and cash collections. In order to calculate that, we have to complete a cash collection schedule, which is what we'll do in an upcoming video. As always, thanks so much for watching.